what the story, guys. This is the first in a new playlist that I'm dubbing Irish Media Watch. I've been meaning to do this for a while over certain other things because the Irish media here is deeply biased. But the straw on the camel's back now is just how they've been behaving over this uh, family care um, referendums that we just had here in Ireland. The biggest single rejections of a, of a proposition by government in the history of the state. I mean, literally, the, the care one is number one and the family one is number three. I mean, literally, the only one was the time they tried to make us lower the age of the president, 21. It was over 67% rejected in one and over 73% rejected in the other. But if you were listening to the Irish media for the month or so leading up to this, you would have swore this was a bolted on 66% yes for both referenda. So this fit is my opinions of what those referendums were about. And to be honest with the expression, the increasing anger I'm feeling towards the media and the utter gaslighting campaign they've been uh, engaging in. And to be honest with you, now that the referendum's open, they're all running a mile for it now. They're all saying that it was obvious a mile away from about a week ago that they were going to fail, but that is not what they were reporting. I mean, I'll give you a bit of background on myself. I'm the type of person that I vote in every opportunity that I get. So, like, if it's a council election, if it's a referenda, if it's a, a general election, you know, I vote. Even if I think I'm going to come completely hammered in it, I will turn up because as far as I'm concerned, if you don't vote, you don't have a say. And I'll be honest with you, the, the mainstream media coverage of this was so toxic that I actually went into that referenda despondent. I was absolutely convinced when I went in to vote no, no, that I was in a vast, vast minority. Instead, the next day it turns out that three quarters of the country agrees with me. So while I'm fair chuffed now and I'm kind of walking in there that I feel good that, you know, I'm not alone out there and the good majority of the people in the country still agree that mammies matter and that the family matters. I'm really, really annoyed that the, the media did manage to make me feel like that. And it does make me wonder just how many people who would have voted no didn't turn up because they didn't think they mattered. And when you look at the sheer scale of the rejection of these referenda, you start look at that. This, this isn't just like, oh, maybe a bit of incompetence, maybe we're a little bit wrong here now. This seriously looks mendacious. This looks like they knew that this was going to go that way. But they didn't care. They just shilled for the government anyway. And indeed, if you look cursorily at any of the coverage on RTE or Virgin the next day or listen to the radio, you would have seen basically a host of yes voters talking to a bunch of yes voters about how the rest of the country all voted no. And they were all sitting there with faces like smacked arses. And worse, when they were caught being wrong on this, their first defence was to turn around and say that the public was confused. And in fact, in the very early sections, you had people start pulling the far right card to try and say it was just some fringe lunatics. A tactic that they dropped pretty quick sharp when they realised that it was over 90% rejected in some working class areas. Which, by the way, is something they're running a mile away from. We've had a lot of claims in this that, you know, one of the referendum was supposed to formalise relationships for single mothers and the like. And how it's, well, a member of minister came in and said, oh, I feel so sorry that that's not going to happen fundamentally missing the point that the areas that would have the most number of single mothers in it voted 90% against the proposition that she was putting forward, meaning that they were very clearly turning around and telling her to stuff it. I mean, there really was an insidious angle to all this in how the media decided to spin this, and even the names of some of the referendum. The Care Amendment, for instance, was really about writing mothers and wife, uh, housewives out of the Constitution, whilst the family one was about undermining the family. In early reportage, the media glommed onto the word confusion to try and explain why people voted no for that one. But there's a world of difference between looking at wording and knowing it's vague and not having a clue what they're actually voting on in the first place. And that's what they tried to spin. And it's been heartening to see there's been great pushback against that. It's like, no, they knew exactly what they were voting for. And what they were voting against was a proposition that had results that they could impossibly entertain. You wouldn't put that legislation into your work contract. There's no way in hell you're going to put it into your constitution. And it didn't help that when the media were covering this, they kept misquoting the Constitution in order to spin it in a negative manner that suits their agenda. For instance, they kept trying to say that Article 41.2.1 was saying that a woman's place is in the home. And they're continually getting stopped on Twitter with community notes rectifying that, thank God those things were introduced. Informing people that it's almost exactly the opposite of what they've been saying. I mean, I'll read it out for you here. Article 41.2.1 of the Constitution reads, in particular... The state recognises that by her life within the home, women give to the state a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. Now, that's not saying women. That's saying woman by her life in the home. That's housewives. That's a recognition by the state that housewives provide a service for the common good that cannot be achieved without them. And I might point out, over this whole actual campaign, there hasn't been a single housewife been actually interviewed about how they feel about that being removed. 
oh, we've got a coterie of gender studies qualities from Trinity College. We've got professors. We've got uh, with people from National Women's Council of Ireland who don't seem to have any national women in it. It's been a right laugh to check out their website and find out that women can't actually join it. You've got to be some sort of NGO or corporation in order to get a voice in the place. And one of the funnier things in this whole affair was watching them be completely unrepresentative of ordinary women in this country and then finally running for the hills when they went to go for a debate at 7 o'clock on RTE to say that they weren't available anymore. But getting back to my point there, this is a state recognition of housewives. This is one of the most maligned, sneered at and dismissed group by the elite snobs in the media. They are continually looked down on them for having the audacity to just want to actually look after their families. This was the archaic language that the RT keep moaning about, that in actual fact is very forward looking. It actually recognises something that isn't recognising beyond an economic unit in this society anymore. And i got to be honest, it's been great to see the people of this country want to keep that in the constitution against the wishes of the gender ideology lunatics who seem to despise women and well, at this stage don't even know what the hell they are. And furthermore, Article 41.22 states that the state shall therefore endeavour to ensure that mothers shall not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labour to the neglect of their duties in the home. Now, this is the one that got the mainstream media to completely spaz out. As they engage in mental gymnastics, they seem to imply that that means that women shouldn't be allowed out of the home and into the workforce. It's the exact opposite. Far from being archaic, this is an incredibly prescient text that seem to predict that some way down the road that women will be forced into the workforce against their means just to keep a roof over their head and to feed those kids. And the notion of the words that duties in the home is somehow some sort of slur. Doctors have duties of care to their patients. Solicitors have duty of care to their clients. So what a surprise that mothers have duties of care to their children. That's what that statement means. And to watch, to be honest, a bunch of mendacious lunatics in the media try and spin that as some sort of charity to keep women enslaved in the house, it's just ridiculous. Now, this is one of the provisions I'm delighted the most that was kept, because there's a court case coming up in April, barely a few weeks from now, in which a woman has taken it on this exact ground to look after her severely disabled son. A yes vote to this article would have cut the legs out from underneath her uh, court case. And to get to the Supreme Court in this country is not cheap. She had to go through every other court in the land to get there. And this really was a deeply cynical looking move to me to try and kibosh her case literally weeks before she was due to be heard. So I'm absolutely delighted this one has stayed in. And to be honest with you now, I think the government is scared of this one. Because now I think the notions of mothers being forced into the workforce is the actual lived experience of girls these days. This country has changed radically. When my dad got married... He could buy a house, support a spouse, raise four kids and run a car on a wage less than the average industrial wage. That is a literal fantasy to the people being raised today, to the people out in the workforce today. In my generation, now I'm a 50 year old elf, I'll admit that first, but when I got my job in the mid 90s, I was earning 7,000 pound a year. I could buy a house on a single wage by myself. Roll forward to the 2020s and the girls I work with now they can't rent doing the same job and in multiples of what I was on back then. So while if this article hasn't been acted on that much in the courts, I think you're actually facing a situation now where we've got a cohort of women out there who are earning good wages, who are able to get together and actually fund a case themselves based on their needs and their desires to not be forced into the workforce to, to the detriment of their children. I think cynically one of the main reasons they want to get rid of this bit of article of legislation was because now they're going to face a deluge of people who can actually fund the court cases to go in and get their rights vindicated. And it all looks to be staring with that last in a couple of weeks' times who's going to be trying to look after a disabled kid. So best of luck to her. I mean, it really astounds me that this bit of legislation, which, yes, can be interpreted as, you know, patriarchal, if you want to say it that way, but is incredibly prescient about the situation we're in now economically. And it does an awful lot to protect the rights of women if they can actually get into the courts to do it. And to see the media class throw this in people's places as if it's a bad thing is just ridiculous at best and probably insidious at worst about what their motives are. The rejection of that care amendment is the biggest single repudiation of a government in the history of the state. And fair play to the people who do it. Fair play to the, the, the working class people that came out and voted overwhelmingly, even the ordinary people, 
in the affluent areas. They came out. There wasn't a single constituency in Ireland that voted in favour of this. And to be honest with you, stepping back, getting out of that bubble of all the woke identity politics and all that sort of stuff, what really amazes me that you actually have a, a shower of clueless gobshites in media and in NGOs and in the government who actually thought they could turn around and say to the Irish people to vote the Irish mammy out of the constitution. There is no more beloved figure in Ireland than the mammy. Brandon O'Carroll has made millions portraying one in a comedy show. It is literally a trope. So the notion that they actually thought that they could get the plain people of Ireland to actually get rid of her. The, literally the weekend of Mother's Day is hilarious to a degree. It's been absolutely wonderful to see all the memes online of people just saying, all right, ma, you're still in the Constitution. As they celebrate Mother's Day with them. Likewise with the Family Amendment. The Family Amendment um, the Constitution, Article 41.11 says that the state recognises the family as the natural, primary and fundamental unit group of society and as a moral institution possession inalienable, and imprescriptible rights and deceded and superior to all positive law. In Article 41.3.1 says the state pledges itself to guard with special care the institution of marriage on which the family is founded and to protect it against attack. In my opinion, this went down because the legislation they were trying to propose was an attack on marriage. It literally wanted to strike out the section to say that the institution of marriage on which the family is founded will be gone. And they wanted to introduce a section that said whether founded on marriage or other durable relationships. And they refused point blank to say what durable relationships were. We had a ridiculous sight of the Minister Roderick O'Gorman coming out saying that the courts would be able to legislate for this. But the simple reality is that the supreme law of the land is the constitution and there will be nothing but court cases taken in order to receive the rights put forward for those durable relationships. It was literally a lawyer's charter to make millions out of the courts on this one. But moreover, I think the people rejected that because the previous and existing legislation is critical. You know where you stand when you're married, that's it. And if you don't want to involve yourself in that institution, you don't. And this is what's been really annoying about the coverage of this in relation to how some of the ministers have been talking. Catherine Martin, I believe, minister, was saying that, oh, it's just so terrible that single mothers won't be recognised to be the same level as married couples. As I said earlier, completely ignoring the fact that 90% plus of people in the areas where working class women who are single will be who have children rejected this resoundingly, enthusiastically, comprehensively. And in my opinion, it's just because they're not the clueless waifs that the media and the government seem to think that they are. This is not the 1960s. If a woman is a single mother now, it's true her choice. She has decided not to get married to this guy she's a father with, either because he's done a legger, or because she's now in a position where she has assets of herself and could be compromised in the family law courts and have to hand over an awful lot of her goods and properties to a guy who may not be worth it. The statement that 42% of kids are born out of wedlock in this country doesn't seem to recognise the fact that those women made the choice to do that. There is no shame around being a single mother now. Nobody looks down their nose at them, certainly not in working class or medium class areas. And indeed, at the end of the day, most of them get married anyway. So it's actually an insult to those girls to say that they need extra protection when they have taken very logical steps on how they want to progress with their relationships. They're not barefoot and pregnant. They have good jobs. They have good earnings. They probably got property. And they have very real reasons to question about whether they should give the force of marriage to another person who could just walk away from them. I think that's one of the biggest massive takeaways from all this. The sheer contempt that the media have for housewives and mothers and the actual news and savvy that they have in regards to how they live their lives. As stated earlier, the Constitution is not a place for ambiguities. It's a place for clear-cut, black-and-white description, so you know exactly where you stand. Anything else is just going to be a disaster in the courts. So I think the plain people of Ireland rejected that based on the ground that it would just be a confusing mess in terms of what the outcomes would be. And I think that the single mothers were looking after their own interests, rightfully, to maintain themselves in the special position they have in the constitution as mothers and to be recognised as housewives, as underscored in the care referendum section. And down the line, when they do decide to get married, to have all the protections and powers that they've got under the constitution on the family section. And I'll be honest with you, I've been walking on air for the last two days that, to find out that the majority of people in this country aren't stupid, that they can see through a, a blatant ruse. 
that the desire to protect traditional family values in Ireland isn't some sort of conservative right-wing agenda. It's the normal view and populace of the country. We are tolerant and we are open to other arrangements, but the simple God honest truth is we are not going to sit back and see the fundamental backbone of the country, the family unit, attacked by a bunch of share of Egypts in the media and in poly politics and the NGOs, who, to be brutally honest, only wanted these referendums for virtue signaling purposes. They wanted to go around the world and say, oh, look how progressive our, and gender neutral our constitution is. And that's why, two of one, all discussions about this afterwards have generally been by a bunch of people who look like somebody just shot their puppy. I'm proud the Irish people made the decision they did. I'm enjoying the salt that's flowing from the mainstream media, as they have been running away from nuts from their stance on this whole position, as they try to fully throw the blame on the government for its failures. And I hope you got to enjoy my take on why I think the, what these constitutional um, amendments stand for and what the people of Ireland rejected in order to maintain the status quo. They weren't confused. They weren't ill-informed. They made a right, logical, sensible decision. And as I'm sure somebody in government might now is saying, the people have voted. The bastards.